<laughs> hey, everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill has no idea what we're going to talk about today. None. Whatsoever. So, Bill, today what we're talking about is, is living in Florida one big gamble? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it, that's what I want to talk about. Okay. Okay, you're moving to Florida. Uh-huh. But are you really gambling with your finances, with your home, with your safety? And I'm not talking about crime either. I'm talking about with just if you're living along the coast or is it a gamble living in Florida? Are you like, say, there's natural disasters everywhere, okay? Uh -huh. Northeast, you know, New York. Yeah. We had Sandy, California. We have wildfires. We have earthquakes, mm -hmm. you know, in the plains, we have tornadoes. Okay, so I know that. So you guys, you know, go ahead, comment below. But I trust me, I, I know about that. But Florida seems to be in the news a lot. And because of these last two hurricanes, I could tell you right now from all the comments, because I did a couple of videos. You did a video on your channel mm -hmm. about hurricanes. And we got thousands of comments, literally. Yeah, yeah. And people are saying, you know what? I'm not moving to Florida anymore. I was planning to move to New York, to Florida, you know, but I'm not going to move there anymore. But think about it. It's not just Florida, but like Asheville got annihilated, you know, the Carolinas, Georgia, you know. A lot of places got affected by the storms that just came through. It's this was you know, very, very widespread. It was it was really widespread. But today's subject is is moving to Florida just a big gamble. Okay? And I have my opinion. And here's the really important thing. Stay till the end on this one. If I was moving to Florida, there was there was one thing I would look for. The most important thing that I would pick before I picked a location to live in Florida. And I'm going to tell you that towards the end. Hmm. Remind me if I forget, but okay. it's really, really important. What I think is the most important thing when you're choosing a location to live in Florida. In the meantime, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Give it a thumbs up and do a share. So, Bill. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's go down a few things, okay? okay? And we'll talk about the hurricanes too. And we did a couple of videos on it too, but let's talk about insurance, homeowners insurance. Mm -hmm. What do you think is gonna happen to homeowners insurance after all this dust settles down from these hurricanes? I mean, it almost goes without saying that insurance is just gonna go up again, period. Because we already went up to right. kind of make up for previous storms from the years prior. Right? And a lot of those storms haven't been even paid off yet, but exactly. go ahead. Exactly. Right. And then now we had these two storms back to back. Right. And I think insurance is going to go up again because, you know, they need to stay solvent, you know, and in, insurance has insurance for themselves too. And I think that we're going to see an increase. We, we almost would have to because of the massive amount of claims, legitimate claims that are coming from oh yeah the storm what are you kidding me I, you guys could see the other videos i put destruction all over the place yeah. like before i was saying hey one of the biggest problems we had in florida was insurance scams especially the roof scams and right when well, we had a storm yeah you know but these these are storms these <laughs> this is real <laughs> this is real if you drive yeah. even today okay this is like what two three weeks afterwards yeah and you could still see actually helene's probably a month now right no Oh, well, yeah, I guess. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you can see the debris still hasn't been picked up. And the debris just seems like it's getting bigger. And I think it's getting bigger because people now are starting to rip out walls, doors, all that stuff. Yeah, it's it's. I think people are now getting... Because not everybody was back yet because they just didn't have power infrastructure and stuff in some of our areas down here to where they could come in and work. Um, and then some of it was kind of fresh or they moved. You know, they, they kind of relocated further away, evacuated further away, waited until the dust settled and then came back. Right. And and I, so basically insurance now, I think a lot of the insurance companies are going to pull out of Florida after this. They did have a news thing I saw the other day. OK. Um, they were talking about some of the uh, current carriers that they have, that they're, they, they made that pledge that they were not going to back out of Florida and they were going to stay strong, you know, here. But so. They're probably going to tell the state too. Hey, listen, if, uh, I need an approval for a a, a thirty three percent um, policy increase. Some sort of a, a policy increase. We're speculating on. They haven't said anything about that yet. Obviously, but I guarantee but you, they're going to say you, they're hey, going to have to. If you want us to stay in Florida, you know, you got to <laughs> right. you got to approve this. And listen, 
with insurance, doesn't he get it? I know a few people also, you talk about this in your opinion, but a lot of people are going to sell their house because they just can't afford the insurance. And I know for a fact, you lost a couple of deals, not because of the mortgage and not because of the property taxes, but you lost a couple of deals because of the cost of insurance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's when when we work with um, customers in the purchase side of things, uh, that's one of the first things I'm very adamant about making sure that you get your insurance quotes as soon as you possibly can, get that ball rolling. So hopefully the insurance carry, all they're waiting on is, you know, the four point in the wind so they can give you the actual accurate, accurate quote. But getting that idea of and a four point And a four point in the wind, we gotta explain, because a lot oh, of yeah, that's right. people are from, uh, from, it's a Florida thing. It's a Florida thing. And a four point is we check, you know, inspector like me goes in, we check the roof, you know, general conditions, you know, we check the air conditioning, the plumbing, electrical, you know, and just sign off, take some pictures. If we see any deficiencies or unsafe conditions, we report it, they have to fix it. A wind mitigation is more of, you know, how the house is structured, is it a hip roof? Um, is there tie downs, is there straps that it holds the, the roof to the walls? Mm -hmm. um, things like that. So. You know, the insurance companies ask for that so they can get an overall condition of the home and how old the roof is and how many years life expectancy. It used to be five. It used to be three years. Right. And now it's five years, even with citizens. Right. You need five years of life left on the roof so that they can get you your insurance policy. Now, I have worked with and obviously I'm not an, an insurance provider, but I have worked with customers that had roofs that were older and they had to get a secondary policy of some sort. So this is something you can do to work around it. But I think that's gonna be on a very tight case by case basis, but it's definitely worth asking your insurance provider and making sure that you're working with a good quality insurance agent um, that really, really knows the ins and outs of Florida you know, homeowners insurance because they were gonna buy this property and it was gonna be more of a rehab, but they were still getting a loan on it. So there was some wiggle room all right, so the next thing is insurance is going to be a gamble coming down here because you don't know what you're going to pay for. But the, the other gamble is actual hurricanes themselves, okay? Right. You don't know when they're going to hit. Nope. And I don't care where you live in Florida. I don't care if you live in the Keys, in the Panhandle, you know, anywhere in Florida. I don't care, East Coast, West Coast. If you're in Florida, you know, you're going to get hit and get affected from hurricanes. Um, I know people that, you know, we got an alley on the coast and then it skipped over where Bill lives in Wesley Chapel. And then you go a little past him, then everybody else got wiped out by flooding by the rivers. Right. So just outside of Wesley Chapel, you have like uh, Lakeland, Land O'Lakes, Zephyr Hills, things like that. In the, the city of Wesley Chapel itself, we don't really, we have some marsh, some wetlands and some tributaries, but we don't have rivers, particularly running through we have some small rivers and tributaries, but there's nothing built there really right now. So they're out there. So we have to be cautious of that because we do actually, it's technically not Wesley Chapel, but it's literally like across the street. We do have the Hillsborough River. And, and that flooded. It and, flooded. And it, it, we, we tried to go into a friend's house yeah. like recently, a couple of days ago, and it's still flooded. It's still flooded. And we were just, we just came back from a place called Crystal River. Yep. Up north, literally today and everything is still closed down there. Everything's still destroyed. There's still pockets of, you know, water all over the place, debris on the streets. So, you know, if you really, in order to move to Florida, you, one of the things you have to think about is hurricanes. And some people are, are just not good with storms. Right, so I mean, in general, kind of back up a little bit with the storm. So we got, the reason the, the, the rivers are overflowing the way they are is because uh, the hurricane dropped so much water in such a short period of time. And the way the hurricane came in across the coast versus Helene, which skated up across the, the edge of the coast, but that pushed the massive storm surge. So all the coastal property or a lot of coastal properties were flooded. Then Milton came and we had the massive amounts of rain. So that went across the state. Now that fills up all the marshes, rivers, the water has to go somewhere if the, the ground can't absorb it, it's gonna go somewhere. And then all that stuff filters into the river and that's how come we got cresting rivers three days after the hurricane passed. So not for nothing, new, new construction, okay? I gotta mm -hmm. touch on this too. Yep. There's some, we just, we just passed today a yep. new construction site and that place is flooded. So 
these builders, you know, they're trying to find big pieces of land out there, okay, so that they could develop. And they don't want expensive land. Like if you go down by Clearwater, you know, the places that have been built up for years now, they can't, they're not going to spend money. They're going out into where land is cheaper and they're building these subdivisions. There are a thousand unit subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And bigger, some of them. Okay. Them and, you know, and they're going there and there's no historical norm. Does that place get flooded or not? Right. So, yeah, they have engineers go in there and they're like, okay, we got to do this, put more soil here, put more soil there. But, you know, that's a, that's a gamble right there. Buying new construction and a brand new development with no history on it, I consider a gamble. What do you think? Um, yeah, if we're going to compare our last storm to the new construction, that would be more of a gamble because I think this storm just growing up here and on the coast, it was, this was such an abnormal storm. Like I know we've had flooding in the past. We've been hit with hurricanes here in the past. Um, some would argue that Tampa hasn't been hit directly with a hurricane, but this was pretty darn close. And hey, hey, give the people a, a reason why uh, some people think we don't get hit directly. <laughs> It's so they think that the that there's a uh, the the Indians have. Put, I think so. <laughs> they, they've put on they've they've put on a, a, a place a called Safety spell Harbor spell or what have you. Just that the, the Indians, the ancient Indians, are protecting um, this you know our, our area here, Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay from hurricanes. But so, look at look it up. Say Safety yeah. Harbor Indians protecting Tampa Bay, whatever, yeah. and you can read about it. I think I think it's I, it's a good read. It's cool. It's a good read. Yeah. So, but you don't so. You, so you, do you think buying in a new construction, and I know I'm putting you on the spot because no, okay. you sell new construction. Well, no, I'm just, I, but I tell people this too, because the, people do ask these questions and you can't, it's hard to compare. Honestly, you have to make your own decision. You have to know what your own tolerances are, but it's hard to compare and say, well, I'm not going to buy new construction inland because this storm cut across the state like it did. Or what was it? Ian went up the center of the state. You know, it's like, well, I'm not going to buy anything in Orlando because that storm happened that way. Um, you know, and if, if you might have to reevaluate whether or not you want to move to Florida, if that's the case, you know, storms are part of life here, you know, and while we did have these huge tragedies, it's one of those things that you kind of have to decide, is this worth it for you to move here? Um, because you don't know what could like, my neighborhood and the like i'm not in a brand new construction neighborhood but across the streets brand new construction and it had no damage whatsoever mm -hmm. so we were good to go there a couple trees down and that was about it but you move over one more neighborhood not even a mile and massive power outages and a lot of damage it just kind of depended on where you were and then there would be other areas another two miles another direction and we had flooding so it's always a gamble when you're trying to compare it to some type of a historical storm. And I know there's comments because they were on my channel too about, well, last year's storm was historical and the year before that was historical. Well, you know, so this, on, this, like, this hundred year storm thing, you know, yeah. I, I hear about that every year. This is a hundred year yeah. rainfall. This is a, this is a hundred year storm. Come on. It's, they're, they're more frequent. And okay. I'm not an alarmist, but the storms do seem like they get a little bit stronger and things do seem like it's getting hotter. I'm not saying, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not trying to say it's it, the the weather's going one way or the other, but right. I'm just saying I have never seen a storm like this, and I've been through a lot of storms. Um, You've been here longer. Well, yeah, I grew up here. I mean, so. do you remember a storm this powerful? I mean, we've hit, the state has been hit by storms more powerful than this. You're talking about like Katrina? Yeah, like Katrina. Um, you know, we've had some other storms that were back-to-back. -back. People don't remember it, but it was years ago. It was... Uh, you know, it was on our coast, but, you know, further south, we had some back-to-back -back storms. I remember deploying out there. And it, so, I mean, I do kind of remember some of these storms, but here in the Tampa Bay area, that's, I think, what we're kind of focusing on. Is this the first time somewhere, you know, something like this has happened? Hurricane Elena was in 1985 or something like that. And it's sad. I just remember that sitting out on the coast, out in the Gulf, just churning around because I just remember it was just nasty for days out here. And there was a pretty good amount of damage, but we never had any super major flooding. All right, Bill, what's another thing that's could be a big gamble uh, moving to Florida? Like the one I, I would suggest as a gamble is starting a brick and mortar shop. 
and let me explain why I'm saying brick and mortar. I'm not saying starting a, a business, starting a business is great in Florida, starting a brick and mortar shop here because how many businesses right now, just from the storms, are knocked out or out of business? They, people can't afford to be out of business this long. No. We went through, we just went past three or four restaurants. You know, they're going to be gone. Restaurants here that haven't been closed this long in years, mm -hmm. you know, annihilated. So I, that that is that is a gamble. Right. You know, and this is different than the pandemic shutting down our area here where, you know, restaurants weren't open and then they became kind of hybrid because we were a little bit more loose during the pandemic here in Florida. But this is, you know, a lot of coastal, a lot of places that are close to so water. So people lose their jobs, too. Yeah, it's it's a it's a huge thing. And it's kind of what we've talked about for economic impact. While on one hand, there's going to be some positive, And then on the other hand, there's negative. And the negative is these stores and these restaurants, A, they lost product, they've lost, you know, merchandise, food, the ability to serve people, and they're closed. And they're not going to get, you know, cleared to open back up again in some cases for months. And how does A, the owner, the bills still keep coming in, and then all the employees. And, you know, a lot of people like, you know, the fishing charter companies, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I own a fishing charter company too. And here's here's the deal right now. The water behind us is brown, literally brown because of all the runoff that's still coming. OK, me and Bill were just talking about this yep. before. It's disgusting. OK, yeah. before the storm, it was beautiful. You go out there, it looks like pool water, but not not right now. And it could take months. It could take months for it to clear up and go back to the way it was. And not, not even counting the debris that's in the water right. or the land shift, the sandbar shifted. Sandbar shifted, the you know, channels we, have shifted. Yeah, we just went and saw a few mile markers missing yep. for navigation. So you're talking about probably before we get back to normal, even with fishing charters, you're probably talking about four to five months, okay? That's four to five months that a lot of these captains are gonna be suffering. Anybody yeah. that makes a living off of the water is gonna be suffering. Yeah, And that's not even counting if they even still have a boat. Right. So, so it's a, that's a gamble too. All right, Bill, here's the thing too, that I was talking about at the beginning. If, if I was moving to Florida, okay. And I said, okay, I'm moving to Florida. What's the one most important thing I would pick, you know, to, to buy in Florida location. And it's one word elevation, <laughs> right. elevation. I would find the highest point around. If I want a certain area, I would find the highest point around. And that's where I would buy. And remember, one caveat on that, Go just ahead. so people understand, because we tend to focus when we go sea level. We're worried about the coast. But we have to remember that inland people were affected with this too. So when we're talking, so you go to Wesley Chapel as an example, or we just go on the other side of US 19 here, which is a main drag just outside of um, the area that we're at on the coast. That's not even a mile in, and you're almost 28 to 30 feet above sea level. But right. it floods. But here's the deal. When I bought my house that I live in, behind mm -hmm. my house, I got a big, big retention pond, and I got a stream that the right. runoff comes out. Okay, during the storms, that stream fills up and, mm -hmm. and we have like what looks like a, like, a, like a dam and, and the water goes over it and the retention pond fills up. Now, technically you would think my house would be flooded, but right. I'm at the highest point. So down, down the stream, mm -hmm. that whole neighborhood, even at the end of my neighborhood is gonna get flooded before I do. Right. And because so I, you know what the difference is? The difference is 11 feet. That's it. Right. 11 feet. Mm -hmm saves my house, but floods, another, not that I want anybody's neighborhood to get flooded, but floods another neighborhood because of 11 feet. Yeah. That's how much of a difference, you know, such a small change could do. So it's elevation. Think about that when you guys are moving here. Yeah, think about that. And just, so where do you get that information? You get it from a survey or you go to the GIS and get that information and you can see the elevation of different properties and stuff. Uh, a lot of information on the county's websites and uh, there's a lot of links to those things. So you kind of know where they're at and you can look up some historical flood data and stuff. So there's a lot of information out there that you can take a look at. Um, and if you want, you can always reach out to Bill Yeah, just too. give me a call. I mean, this, I, I talk to a lot of people um, throughout the week that just call to have conversations and get to know what's the, going on in the area. And that's, that's my job. I yeah, mean, it and, really is. And Bill's more positive than me. 
with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, but the, I just give you the information that you need so that you can make the most informed decision you can for you and your situation. Yeah. I mean, that's realistically what it boils down to. Yeah. Anyways, that's today's video. Got anything to add? Nope, that's it. We're good. Hey, listen, like always, do me a favor. Subscribe. I'm trying to reach a goal, and I want to do this full time, and I need your help to do it. So subscribe, hit the bell notification, and give it a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Oh, by Thanks. the way, check out this video over here. I picked it out <laughs> just for you guys. I did. Check it out. It's a really good video. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.